Good morning and welcome to Morning Manna on this 13th day of the month of July. Coming to you from my mom's garage. This is a place that I have spent lots of time in my life. Um, I'm coming to you for a very important reason. I want to talk, it, talk to you about the wonderful world of DIY or do it yourself. You know, as a kid, I remember spending a lot of time out here working with my dad. Well, when I say working with my dad, I would go be his, uh, I'd fetch tools for him. He'd be under our family's car working and he'd say, hey, I need a eight millimeter wrench or I need a, a, a three quarter wrench or could you bring me this or that? And I would go out and I'd get it for him. Um, as I grew and I got my own car, my very first car was a 1980 one I think Mercury Capri now it was a uh, I bought it for seven hundred and fifty dollars maybe it was 84 I don't know uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars and it was not in pristine shape when I got it so one of the very first things that I did was I went and bought a Haynes uh, repair manual those things were great they broke down everything that you would need to do to maintain a car or repair a car Everything from changing oil to changing brake pads and rotating your, your, getting your rotors rotated uh, to, to changing your timing belt. All of those things I was able to do with the help of the Haynes Repair Manual. But these days, on, on my cars that I currently own, I do not have Haynes Repair Manual anymore. Mostly because YouTube is way better. I remember when we returned from, uh, to Oregon from Brazil and we got our cars, one of the first things I need, wanted to do on this Nissan Rogue was to, to change it to oil. So I just went to YouTube and I typed in 2014 Nissan Rogue oil change and boom, step by step video, not just instructions written outward, but video showing me exactly what I was going to be uh, looking for, exactly what I needed to do in order. I remember when I wanted to put on a trailer hitch. I got online, I got on Amazon, they delivered the trailer hitch, and then I, I, I watched the video. I watched it three or four times. I wanted to know exactly what I was looking for, exactly what I would be doing. Uh, it even tell me, you need a 14 inch wrench or 14 millimeter wrench, excuse me. And so when I sat down to actually do the work, I had everything lined out and it went really smoothly. It was very easy. It wasn't the back and forth trips that I did with my dad. There was with these videos or even the instruction manual, um, the repair manual, there was uh, a lot less of these trips back and forth to the mail, uh, the, the toolbox, less unmounting uh, unnecessary things unnecessarily. It was cheaper, it was faster, it was less frustrating than trying to do it on my own. And in truth, I've become pretty reliant on these DIY videos on YouTube, from everything from working on my car to, to fixing a drippy sink, uh, a running toilet, to even learning how to play guitar. You can pretty much learn how to do anything or repair anything just by watching these videos. So much so that I wonder why in the world wouldn't people watch a video? I mean, if you could save time, it, sure, it does cost you time to sit down and search for the video and you have to watch it two or three times, maybe more than that, stop it, slow it down. But it's a lot faster and a lot cheaper than going out there and, and learning on your own, scraping your knuckles, doing things the wrong way, they're on the wrong order, having to redo it, even for the experience, do it yourselfer. You know, God has given us a great do it yourself guide or repair manual in the Bible. It's like the, the repair manual or, or, or these videos that were produced by the manufacturer himself. The Bible gives us the secrets of life, the right way to live, live, and how to fix things when they are broken. Listen to how the psalmist in Psalm 37, 31 put it when speaking of the righteous and the relationship the righteous have with the Word of God. He wrote, the law, is in his, the law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. 
Or, or listen to what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy 11, verses 18 and 21. He wrote, Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And then in 21 he says, That your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of heaven above the earth. It's the right way to live, how the manufacturer recommends. Now listen to what Moses' predecessor, or excuse me, his successor, Joshua wrote in Joshua 1.8. He says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your ways prosperous, and you will have good success. In the New Testament, Paul wrote the Romans in Romans 15, 4, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through the patience and the comfort of scriptures we may have hope. And though these things, these, all these things are written about the Word of God, in the Word of God, by some of our heroes of faith, there are Christians who minimize the importance of, the, of Scripture. There, there's a growing trend, even in Christian churches, where personal experience seems to trump the Word of God as importance, as applicable. And we're seeing this all around our country and indeed all around the world. I remember a while back, I was talking to a Christian who was going through a tough season or had just come out of a tough season. And, and in the course of our conversation, this person said something to the effect of, yeah, I know the Bible says this and this and this, but, you know, my experience. And they proceeded to tell me this long personal journey of self-discovery. It was painful. Uh, they, they were talking about a painful trauma that they had, that they had endured. And through self-discovery and counseling, they came to understand there is personal benefit to forgiving someone that has sinned against you. And it was like they were speaking of this epiphanal moment that they had, uh, when a life-changing moment that they had when they realized that there was benefit to them to, to forgiving somebody, even if that person had no you know, it wasn't for their benefit, the other person's benefit, but, but for theirs. And, and I listened to their story, and I nodded my head, and I thought to myself, wow, isn't that exactly what Jesus had said in the Word, saying, for, you forgive and you shall be forgiven? Forgiving others will, be, will have benefit to the person forgiving. And I wonder how much shorter that journey of personal discovery could have been how much faster, how much less pain could have been expended had they just trusted the Word of God, had they just placed, given value to the Word of God. If they would have just tr watched that do-it-yourself video, I wondered how much faster and easier their journey would have been had they just followed the Word. So as I close today, I pray that God will give us a humility to trust His Word, to go to His Word often, to hide His Word in our hearts, so that when things break or when we are building things, perhaps for the first time, we can do it right the first time.